Cranky Geek Fall 2022 is brought to you by Google, Spearline, Crisp, and Daily. For more information, see the links in the description. Here with me uh, now have Armand of Crisp, one of our sponsors. If you're you're not familiar, Crisp the noise cancellation you know makes your audio sound a lot better. Armand will talk a lot more about that. Armand, I'll let you uh, I'll let you take it away. Hello, everyone. Um, so as Chad said, we're going to talk about uh, processing audio in web and in general our SDK. So uh, a little bit about our agenda. So we're going to talk like you know, to have a little introduction about our SDK. Uh, then we'll talk about our challenges, what we uh, what we faced, what we found out. Uh, then we'll talk about our first POC, first JavaScript SDK that we came up with, and our new version based on the learnings from the previous one and a small demo, of course. So let's have just a fast introduction. Uh, so our SDK is C++ based, and it has some functionality like noise can canceling, voice activity detection, some other next-gen voice technologies like background voice cancellation and so on. Uh, it is used by our desktop applications and it supports various sample rates, various frame durations, and available for, for almost all the device uh, for almost all the platforms. Uh, the problem was it was it was not available for web usage, and that's why we started to investigate and try to understand what we can do here. And here are the challenges that we faced here. Um, so so uh, here we found out our main challenges and uh, let's go over each of them and try to understand how we solve them. So the first challenge for us was actually to run C++ directly in web. It sounds kind of strange, but uh, there is a well-known solution for that, which is WebAssembly. And it is basically a binary instruction format similar to assembly. I am kind of sure many of you know what it is. And yeah, you can just compile your C++ to WebAssembly and run it in the browser and it will work. Uh, so how you compile it? Uh, it's actually, again, pretty simple. Uh, you can just use uh, mscripton compiler. There are many other compilers actually, but mscripton was our choice here. And uh, well, here you can see the simplified diagram, what's going on there. It is just compiling that you can use it right away in your JavaScript code. Our next problem here, so our next problem here was that we couldn't really use big weight files. So what is a weight file? It's just a AI trained model, which we are using to actually clean the voice. And in our desktop applications, we're using some regular models, which are over 13 megabytes. But in web, it's not a good idea because every time when you're loading the page, you will have to load that weight file as well because caching is not always an option. So how we solved it, that it's just our core SDK team worked on smaller weights, which are fully functional. They are just oriented on the performance. And yeah, that's the solution we came up with for this problem. Our next problem, which is kind of the biggest one, it was uh, audio in web and some limitations like 128 samples per frame. So for this one, I guess it's better to start from the basics, like how audio works in web to understand these concepts. And well, audio in web works <laughs> in a strange way. So uh, all the inputs and outputs from the browser uh, come, um, come in frames and each frame consists of samples. So sample is just a number describing an audio, and each frame consists of somewhere uh, consists of 128 uh, samples, and there is this uh, thing called sample uh, sample rate, which is basically uh, the number of samples that you are going to get in a second. So uh, I guess some of you have heard that 8,000 sample rate, 16,000, like many devices are described with their sample rate rate as well. So uh, now knowing that we have these frames that comes with uh, 128 samples and uh, knowing what sample rate is, 
it's really kind of intuitive to calculate how many milliseconds will take this, let's say, seven frames, for example. You're just going to divide and multiply by 1,000, and you'll get the number of milliseconds. This is important. Why? Because our problem was our SDK needs at least 10 milliseconds of audio to process. So we were getting the audio with 128 samples, and uh, we need 10 milliseconds, and we're going to output 10 milliseconds from our SDK. But the browser all already expects us 128 sample output. So uh, what we did, we added two buffers in the middle of these steps. So first buffer will just collect that 128 samples. And at the moment when that sample count is more than 10 milliseconds, it will take that 10 milliseconds and send it to the SDK to process. Uh, then uh, when we have our output, it will come to the next buffer, which is basically doing the opposite. It is going to split it into 128 chunks and give it back to the browser. And uh, this is the most challenging part actually. And uh, you will see why later when we'll talk about our first version. So our first SDK, so this was a kind of a POC. We're trying to understand how it works in general. And we came up with a simple, architect, a simple architecture. So uh, some key points related to that architecture, and then we'll look at the design. So our C++ side uses XNMPEG for just optimizing mathematical operations and uh, and scripting for compiling, basically. Buffering system on C++ side, which is really important because uh, this is a key point and one of the key mistakes we made. Uh, and on the GS side, we just had our web audio API to work with our VAS module and process audio using audio context. Here you can see like the simplified diagram of our first architecture and uh, pay attention to this side uh, state machine and audio buffer, 128 sample. Uh, these were kind of like uh, not in the right place because uh, they turned out to be actually compiled into the VAS module and it resulted in some risks of losing audio data and this state machine implementation was really complicated to keep the state every time uh, and we went for a simpler solution here. But there were actually different cons too, so let's see what were the problems of this architecture. So the first one, buffering system, again, uh, I'm not going to repeat myself. It's just recent, the risk of missing data and additional middleware. Well, we had two uh, buffers in different places doing different stuff to make that audio consistent. And we had also multiple memory leaks. So uh, in web audio, uh, terminating audio worklet node is kind of a challenge, actually. Uh, and uh, we found out a way to fix that, but with this architecture, it wasn't really uh, an option here. Same goes with the sample rate change, because for that we needed to somehow, again, terminate the current audio context and audio workload. Uh, and yeah, that, that was resulting in multiple memory leak issues. And the last one, last problem here was that uh, actually, we were giving our models separately in a folder to our, our clients, and they had to host it and have static links and use that. So we came up with a solution, which was our new version of JavaScript SDK. And let's see what we did. Actually, we did a lot of improvements here. Uh, key ones here are we actually moved all the audio processing to a new web worker thread. And also we moved all the buffering from C++ side to that same worker thread. So everything is done on side of the JavaScript now. And uh, that makes C++ actually uh, work kind of better. And we don't have any risk of, uh, risk of using data. Also, we changed the C++ side so that we'll have more methods from C++ instead of uh, some combined methods to just run, toggle, and dispose. 
And thanks to that, we can actually now run and you know, we edit isolation IDs and now we can run actually multiple processors at the same time in the same tab. And also a technical improvement was to move all the all that Git sub modules to a separate, uh, uh, to make them Conan packages for convenience and for builds and for testing purposes. It was one of the best solutions ever. So here you can see what has changed actually. Uh, so uh, this should be worker by the way. <laughs> so uh, everything on the left side is now a Conan package. And now we have our updated API, which is again uh, compiling to VAS module, but now our VAS module is importing to the worker and our buffering system is again in the worker. We have our main thread, which is crisp SDK, uh, and we have our worklet, which is basically uh, just an audio worklet. Uh, and it takes audio and it receives audio. And all the messaging, all the uh, processing of data goes through that main thread to the worker processes and comes back. And actually, we can go to the next slide and see the uh, like sum up of the improvements here. So thanks to this, uh, we now had our buffering on the worker in the GS thread and it works faster actually in this case, better at least, with how, uh, consistent, let's say. Uh, now we can fully terminate our audio worklet because uh, when we're terminating the worker, everything there is terminating. So uh, now we can actually also handle device change, sample rate change, like when you're plugging in a new headphone with a higher or lower sample rate, we can adjust the AI model, which is processing it, and uh, it will result in a better, better quality. Uh, now we can actually, in the future, mul run multiple instances of our processors, and Another important improvement here was we changed in architecture uh, the part when we were giving our weights. And now we're using mscript and data files instead. And instead of giving them like all the files one by one, we're just giving out one mscript and data file. And that's kind of it. Well, as you can guess, our current solution is not perfect yet because it's still under development actually. Uh, and there, the main problem here, I think, uh, would be uh, reducing number of post messages. So as you can see, like the whole audio part for transferring one chunk of data, one frame of audio, we're using four post messages. That can be kind of fixed uh, with using a uh, shared array buffer. But actually, it has some security issues, and it will require from user to set some specific headers. So we're not going to use that in our main version, let's say. It may be delivered uh, upon request, may I don't know. Uh, so what we're trying to do now, we're trying to reduce the number of post messages using our buffering system so that we can we will send post messages only when we have enough data and uh that's what we're thinking to do now i guess that's it for the presentation part uh -huh. i guess there's time for a little demo here so basically i created this little application which is uh just uh, recording an audio using the sdk part and let's see how it works. So I'm starting the recording and now I'm making some noise here and the noise will be heard in this part because the SDK is off. And let me toggle the SDK. And now I'm again making this noise and this will probably be cleaned because the SDK is on. So let's stop the recording and see how it went. Recording. And now I'm making some noise here and the noise will be heard in this part because the SDK is off. And let me toggle the SDK. And now I'm again making this noise and this will probably be cleaned because the SDK is on. So let's stop the recording and see how it went. So it cleaned the majority of it. It's probably my microphone issue that it didn't do it fully, but it cleaned the majority. 
Um, well, I guess that's it on my part. Yeah, that was great. I'm on. Thank you to our sponsors. Crisp. Crisp's AI solution removes background noise and echo from meetings.